The question many ask is, are we alone in the universe? SETI was set up to try and search for signs of extraterrestrial life. Many scientists believe that given the vastness of space and the sheer number of galaxies and stars, there is a high likelihood that intelligent life must have developed elsewhere. There are, however, many skeptics who would argue that the lack of evidence instead suggests that intelligent life must be exceedingly rare. So far, these searches have been based on the idea that intelligent life would look and act somewhat like we are. But what if this idea was totally wrong? What if this is blinding us to something simpler right in front of our faces? In a recently published paper, two scientists argue that maybe we should consider other, more simple forms of life, microbes, as being capable not only of listening, but communicating with other similar beings elsewhere in the universe. As crazy as this sounds, the thought process is another reminder of how human-centric our thinking is. Let's dive in and find out more. I have discussed on many occasions how hardy microbes can be when we looked at the ultra-deep biosphere, and we also touched on the idea that microbes might have far more intelligence than we previously thought. As far as we know, bacteria are and have been the most dominant living beings on this planet. If we were to remove the bacteria from our biosphere, it would lead to the eventual collapse of the entire ecosystem. If we examine the human body, then we have about the same number of bacteria as we have cells. Bacteria are very resilient and can survive in the harshest of conditions as well as survive in space. They are also capable of existing in a dormant state for millions of years. Various panspermia hypotheses support this idea as well. Recent mathematical models have even demonstrated that microbial travel may be possible not only in our solar system, but throughout the galaxy. To understand microbes, we need to challenge our human-centric view of life and the universe. Many of us see microbes as single-celled organisms that can cause disease. The reality is very different. Microbes are loosely organised multicellular entities. Bacteria live as part of large colonies of billions that are capable of thinking and decision-making within this colony. A typical bacterial colony is a cybernetic entity, a superbrain, that is capable of solving environmental problems. These colonies are interconnected to all other colonies through a bacterial supersystem called the bacteriosphere. This network of genetic information has existed for millions, if not billions of years, and has helped to regulate the flow of organic elements on the planet. So is it possible that these bacterial networks could construct a SETI project? In the paper, the authors argue that it is indeed feasible that they could replicate all the steps required. The first step would be a requirement to read the cosmic scale information. Humans use telescopes to view this information on this scale. Step two is to develop technologies and knowledge to assess whether there are habitable planets and if they contain life. Step three is to advertise our presence on Earth to the intelligent extraterrestrials and attempt to make contact with them and to make first contact if they respond. Their version of the microbial SETI would look something like this. Microbes have limited capacity to read the cosmic scale information. Cyanobacteria are capable of reading the visible light portions of the electromagnetic spectrum coming from the sun. Plants utilise this feature when they turn towards the sun. Cyanobacteria developed a biotechnology in the form of photosynthesis. This allowed microbial life to become more complex and eventually led to plants and animals. This biotechnology, photosynthesis, has always fueled life on Earth. Step three would involve the attraction and communication between microbes of a similar chemistry. Extraterrestrial microbes which share a carbon-based chemistry should be able to integrate into the Earth's bacteriosphere. Microbes from Earth could travel into space on asteroids and seed life elsewhere in the cosmos. Humans may also provide a vehicle by virtue of the bacteria that exist within the human body. 
In order to appreciate this concept, it is important to point out that our current understanding of human intelligence is very limited, let alone that of other species. Some biologists argue that human intelligence is just a fragment in a wide spectrum of natural intelligence that includes microbes and plants. We need to re-evaluate what technological signatures are a sign of intelligent civilizations. According to Freeman Dyson, technologically advanced civilizations must have huge energy demands. In order to achieve this, they must therefore build cosmic megastructures like a Dyson sphere in order to harness the power of a star to meet these demands. But if human-like civilizations are indeed rare, there is no point in searching for such structures. Instead, it would be more appropriate to search for biosignatures as signs of microbial life on habitable planets. If stars are indeed connected via filaments that connect back to the centre of the galaxy, these microbes may have an even larger network at their disposal than we realise. Maybe this article is still missing the fundamental point of being part of something larger. At the moment, the assumption is still very much based on life existing in an isolated part of a large universe. What if it was really the opposite? Just like an individual cell is part of a collection of similar cells in a tissue, which are grouped with different tissues to form organs, which are grouped into organ systems, and finally these create the organism. That individual cell has no understanding of the greater picture and how they are all connected together. I find myself deeply inspired by Michael Claridge's Thunderbolt presentations that really start to tease the idea of the connectedness and what function a planet, star, supernova, etc. play in the greater, dare I say, organism? Each individual component is blissfully unaware of the part that they play in the larger structure. Is it time to start thinking way outside of the box when it comes to intelligence and what constitutes life? As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.